the UNESCO World Heritage List currently contains 911 exceptional cultural and natural landmarks from 151 countries. Borobudur is located on the most populous island of Indonesia, Java. This world-famous 9th century Buddhist monument was made part of the World Heritage List in 1991. The 35-meter-high pyramid-shaped monument is located in central Java, near the fearsome Merapi volcano in the fruitful Kedu Plain, surrounded by volcanic mountains. When viewed from above, it takes the form of a giant mandala, a form of sacred art used in Buddhist ceremonies. India, the birthplace of Buddhism, has two sacred rivers, the Ganges and the Yamuna. The Progo and Elo rivers are their Java equivalents, and Borobudur is built near where these rivers meet. Mahayana Buddhism on Java appeared hundreds of years after its foundation in India. Mahayana, or Great Vehicle, Buddhism is not as strict as Hinayana, or Deficient Vehicle, Buddhism, which only promises salvation to monks. Between 750 and 850 AD, the Sailendra dynasty ruled on most of Java. It was during their reign that thousands of workers built the spectacular architectural wonder in 75 years. The name Borobudur originates from India. Its Sanskrit original, Vihara Buddha Ur, means Buddhist monastery on the hill. Following its short heyday, Buddhism died on Java and this, along with the depopulation of the area, the eruptions of the nearby Merapi volcano and earthquakes, led to Borobudur's fading into decline and obscurity. Its remains were hidden for long centuries by volcanic ashes, debris, and the tropical forest overgrowing the ruins. During the Napoleonic Wars, Java was first occupied by the Dutch, then the English. It was the English who rediscovered Borobudur in 1814, and archaeological excavations started a year later, on the orders of the British governor, Sir Stamford Raffles. The actual restoration of the monument took place at the beginning of the last century, during colonial times, under the direction of the Dutch Theodorus van Erp. This architectural wonder was completely renovated 60 years later, in the by then independent Indonesia between 1972 and 1983, with the financial support of UNESCO and the help and expertise of the experts of 27 other countries. Borobudur was made part of the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1991 after renovation. The monument stands in the middle of a carefully created 85-acre shady park. There is no temple inside the stupa. The building is made up of two million curved basalt blocks of volcanic origin. The sides of the square-shaped base of the huge stupa pyramid are 118 meters long. The monument is composed of six square terraces and three circular terraces. The three divisions of Buddhist cosmology can be witnessed in the building. The level of Kathmandu rises like a wall at the base of the monument. The four square terraces of the Rupad Hatu are divided by corridors decorated by sculptures and reliefs. The three upper circular platforms represent the Arupad Hatu. At their center is the large stupa. 
The five square terraces represent the material world. The three terraces above represent the spiritual world. Visitors can reach the eastern steps of the stupa through the park. According to Buddhist rules, people must proceed clockwise along each level. Otherwise, they summon the evil spirits and the dead. The reliefs on the walls portray stories and events that are important to Buddhists. Pilgrims walk along the corridors, murmuring prayers. This is the Pradakshina, a form of worship. The reliefs on the Kamand Hatu level, the base of the stupa, portray the way karma works, the automatic reward for good deeds and the punishment of bad deeds. Due to static reasons, most of this level has been buried. The Rupadhatu level begins on the lower wide terrace and is used for processions. The 120 reliefs of the first gallery portray the most important parts of Buddha's life, while on the walls of the following galleries we can see scenes from the lives of different bodhisattvas, people who later became Buddhas. From these carvings, we can get a picture of how people lived and what they wore in the 9th century. Scenes from everyday life, work on the field, family life, ships capsizing in storms, wars, tigers, monkeys, elephants, musicians, dancing girls and sovereign royal couples come to life on these reliefs. Visitors can count a total of 2,672 reliefs on the walls. These carvings were originally coated with brightly colored glaze, which proves the great influence of Indian art on Java. Buddha's father was King Sudhodana and his mother was Maya Devi. Buddha himself was born in Lumbini, Nepal, under the name Siddhartha Gautana and received the name Buddha the Enlightened One, only years later when he founded Buddhism. Although Gautama had a wife, he left his home at the age of 29 after his son was born and became a hermit. He learnt from wiser and older hermits and later found the secret to redemption through solitary meditation. After seven years of searching, he suddenly attained an enlightenment while seated under a peepal tree. He realized that if we can free ourselves from the desires and suffering of today, we can reach nirvana, the perfect enlightenment, our ultimate extinction. Following his enlightenment, Buddha traveled the world and taught for 44 years. After his death, his body was cremated and his earthly remains were placed in monuments or stupas. On the four terraces of the Rupad Hatu level, small Buddha statues can be found in niches. The four cardinal points of the compass, north, east, south and west, are guarded by Manushi Buddhas. The positions of their hands, also called mudras, all have their unique meaning. The eastern Buddha holds his palm facing downwards and so calls for the earth as witness to the victory over evil. The southern Buddha gives blessings with his palm facing upwards. The uplifted hand of the northern Buddha symbolizes courage without fear. And the western Buddha also holds his hand in a Buddhist sign. In the upper rows in all four directions, the Dhyana Buddhas offer their teachings. On the upper terraces, statues of meditating and smiling Buddhas can be found in lotus position, all with their unique mudras. Altogether, 504 Buddha statues can be seen on the Rupadhatu terraces. The top of the stupa can be reached by four staircases that divide each side of the stupa in half. The Nirvikala gate leads onto the terraces of the Rupadhatu level where hollow dagobas, perforated bell-shaped niches, can be found. Going from the bottom to the top, their number is 32, 24, and 16, and each of these houses a Buddha statue, a total of 72 statues altogether. According to Buddhist belief, whoever touches the toe of a Buddha statue here has one of their wishes granted. The four staircases leading to the top are guarded by mythical lion statues. Oddly, 
There are no lions on Java, but there are lions in India, the birthplace of Prince Siddhartha, and Nepal's coat of arms is also the lion. In the middle of the uppermost terrace stands the 15-meter-wide closed stupa, the real center of Borobudur. This huge monument is protected from the adverse effects of great tropical rainfalls by a modern drainage system and gargoyles. Borobudur is Indonesia's and also Java's most famous historical and religious monument, which is visited by thousands of pilgrims, visitors, and tourists every day. It is an extraordinary experience for everyone to climb to the uppermost terrace of the stupa and enjoy the full panorama. Buddhist monks, pilgrims, and also simple tourists are touched by the spirit of Borobudur on the uppermost terrace of the Arupan Hatu level, where believers can find themselves within the air of enlightenment. Unfortunately, the religious silence of Buddhist monks and other pilgrims can easily be disturbed by the great crowds and pushy souvenir vendors. The best time to visit Borobudur is early in the morning or late in the afternoon, before sunset. With our entry tickets, we can also visit the Karma Vibhaga Archaeological Museum, which is also located in the park. The museum's collection includes 4,000 original statues and reliefs, and also a photo exhibition of the restoration works on Borobudur. Once a year in May, on Buddha's birthday, during the full moon, Indonesian Buddhists celebrate Waisak in Borobudur. The pilgrimage is a procession that includes two smaller Buddhist monuments, Kandi Mandut and Kandi Pawan, before stopping at Borobudur. The beautiful flower garlands and the yellow, brown, and dark burgundy hoods of the monks provide a spectacular backdrop. Only people who participate at the celebrations in all three places are considered real Buddhists. 